I'm Scott L. Miller. It's the 30th of October, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life living in Nicaragua. Today is a little bit of a travel day for me. I was supposed to be there uh, a few times, but because of uh, scheduling and just the availability of staff, um, I had to wait until today. I'm heading into Managua to go to the Ministry of Health, where I'm going to be getting my yellow fever vaccination so that I'm able to travel to South America. We're going to be talking about that trip, showing quite a bit of driving around Managua, so you get a feel for what it's like in a tropical depression depression so there's rain like crazy that's something you don't normally see us driving around with and talking about like how you get your yellow fever shots why you need them what where it applies and all that right after the bump We started the day thinking we were going to delay a little bit because there was this massive, massive tropical depression that's been hitting us for the last 48 hours or so, and we've been under just non-stop rain for a long time. And this morning, the radar looked like it was going to clear after a little while, so uh, I should have left the house at like 6 o'clock in theory to get to the Ministry of Health on the far side of Managua at like 8 when they opened. But it, that would be driving in the dark and the rain was really heavy, and so we delayed a bit hoping that things would clear up, and by about 9 o'clock, when we had thought things were going to be clear, it was clear that they were not going to be clear and the rain was going to continue and, and be unabated for the entire day. So jumped in the car and uh, made the way to Managua. Uh, Managua, of course, is normally just about two hours away and I had to go to the far side of it. But in the heavy rain between other traffic being slow and uh, me needing to drive a lot slower, it was actually much closer to three hours to get all the way in there, which put us coming into Managua at around about lunchtime. Now, the drive actually went fine. It was not a big deal, just a lot slower than normal. Visibility is bad, and there was a tremendous amount of rain, but it's not like an actual hurricane or anything like that. It's just a lot of rain. There's no actual storm going on. There's no lightning, no anything like that. It's just a steady rain, but that causes a lot of flooding. In general, the roads here are pretty decent if you're on the highways. If you're getting off onto the dirt roads, you're going to rain is bad, right? But even on the highway, at times, there's going to be spots where the water is flowing over the road. It's not terrible. You're up in the, you, it's like a field emptying into another field kind of thing. So you got to be a little bit careful. You got to pay a little bit of attention, but in general, it's pretty good. In more populated areas, the ditches are really dramatic here and they can take some massive storms. But if you get out into the countryside, sometimes you don't have the really good ditch management uh, and you're going to get some of that, uh, that flooding onto the road from time to time. So just something to be aware of. In general, we have really good roads and they try to avoid that because it does a lot of road damage. And of course, you're going to get these big storms on a semi-regular basis. So you just have to be uh, aware of them and ready for them. Um, and uh, mostly we don't drive when doing that. But I really needed my yellow fever today. I should really have had it last week. We tried to go Friday and they don't give out the shots on Friday. It's like Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, I think are the days. Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, sorry, um, that they do it. So luckily we have a contact with the Department of Health who has offered to be on the show. So if you guys have questions in the future, first of all, in general, if you got questions, comments, anything like that, scroll down and take a moment to uh, to ask on the show because that, that's how I end up with a lot of the content that we do, not today, but for a lot of days, that's where we're getting our content from um, is, is having uh, you guys ask those questions, so it really helps. And and even if you're just leaving comments, it helps the algorithm. So like, subscribe, and go down and leave a comment. What a difference it makes. And of course, tell someone else about the show, right? Go find another subscriber. That helps us so much. Okay, so uh, got into, after about three hours, got in. So it was about lunchtime. Really hankering. I didn't have breakfast for Burger King. Cause it's one of the few places that does veggie burgers, and you get that taste of home with the flame-broiled veggie Whopper. But here we don't have the Impossible Burger. We have the Polish version, which is quite good, and a little bit more veggie, a little bit less weird American. Like, the Impossible's good, right? But I actually kind of prefer the Not Impossible Burger that we have here. And um, so got lunch there. Uh, that was nice. And then I needed to make a quick stop at Comtech, which is the big computer store. It happens to be right behind the Burger King. I didn't know. I timed this perfectly. So while I was waiting for the Ministry of Health to, to open up, I was able to get lunch where I wanted, go right around the corner, and uh, Comtech, I've never actually been there. It's always Paul and Dominica being sent there to do shopping in the in the capital. Uh, so I got to go in. It is a giant store. It's like going into a Best Buy or whatever, but it's all computer stuff or, or really closely related, um, so less consumery. Um, and they have all the security 
security cameras and networking equipment and computer parts and uh, hard drives and, and mice and keyboards and all that stuff. I was really impressed. The prices weren't outrageous and the selection was much larger than I realized there was. So that was good. It's not anything like you're going to find in the United States. It's not a micro center in Texas or anything like that, but it was very reasonable and not hard to deal with. And uh, I managed to get what we needed pretty quickly. And uh, from there, I was able to take off and head out to the Ministry of Health where I actually got my yellow fever vaccination. So the first thing I really want to answer is why is it important to have a yellow fever vaccination and who is this for? So the first thing that people are going to ask is do I need yellow fever vaccination if I'm coming to Nicaragua? And the answer is no, we don't have yellow fever here. This is not a danger zone for it. You don't have to have yellow fever vaccination. You really don't need many vaccinations completely in, in a number of times separate from this uh, event where I'm getting a vaccination. People have asked, what do you need for vaccinations for Nicaragua? And the answer is basically nothing, right? They're, they don't check anything. If you're coming from the US, Canada, Europe, anything like that, you, she, has a, she has a coconut back there. And um, the COVID stuff is over. You don't have to have any of that. There was a time when you needed it and it lasted longer than with a lot of the neighboring countries like, like Costa Rica dropped their requirement for COVID testing or vaccine earlier than Nicaragua did. That's, you know, some people found that very uh, annoying or problematic or whatever, but that is no longer the case. It's not something you have to worry about now. So that, that time has passed and now you're just like, you're into normal time, right? And so we recommend that you have whatever vaccines you would normally have uh, as a traveler anywhere. Um, and be aware that at any given moment there could be an outbreak of something here in Nicaragua and that could involve um, flu or dengue or chikungunya, whatever that is. Uh, our, our horse drawing cart for the trash has just arrived and the dogs can't handle it. As always, they love to bark at horses, which drives me crazy. And uh, so, so if there's an outbreak, Right, you may want to check the status of an outbreak and maybe have, if there's a vaccine for some of those things, which there can be, then you may want a vaccine for that. But it's a special case and it's not something I can answer in the general sense. Like if I'm aware of there being an outbreak and I will do my best to connect with the Department of, of Health um, and ask them to alert us to anything like that. If there's a, like, for example, if dengue has an outbreak and they're severely worried about that across the country in general uh, and they're recommending a vaccine, I will do my best to make a short and a video and, and get that information out as it happens. But I don't necessarily necessarily have a way to get those alerts and there isn't necessarily a vaccine for certain things. I don't even know which of those have vaccines. Um, so it, it's just not something you have to worry about in general, uh, any more than anywhere else, no matter where you're traveling in the world, uh, it could be Canada. And if they're having an outbreak of something specific, you may need a flu shot because the flu is just running rampant in Canada that particular season. But in general, you don't need anything for there. So same thing, get your normal shots, be normally healthy, have your doctor check things up, whatever but you don't need anything special for Nicaragua. So why, why yellow fever for me? So yellow fever, first of all, if you're gonna be traveling to a place where you could be exposed to yellow fever, and yellow fever is a mosquito-borne illness much like a malaria, a dengue, a chikungunya. But unlike those, and malaria is pretty nasty, uh, uh, yellow fever has an extremely high fatality rate. Um, it is very, very dangerous. Uh, and, and your chances of recovery get pretty low. Its death rate is actually above. Of those who get a severe yellow fever, the fatality rate is above 90%. So you definitely don't wanna end up with yellow fever, but it doesn't happen in most places. Even here in Nicaragua, where we have a lot of mosquito-borne illnesses, like the ones I mentioned, we don't have to worry about yellow fever because it's not endemic to this location, but it is more uh, endemic in a more tropical area. And the majority of the locations that are at high risk for yellow fever are in Africa. I'm not heading to Africa, but much of South America, especially in the northern portion, does have at least some degree of yellow fever. About 10% of the world cases happen there. Asia essentially has none. North America has none. Um, Europe has none. But Central Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, actually from the Mid-Sahara, it's, it's a little bit misleading. It's not just Sub-Sahara, but from the Mid-Sahara down uh, to pretty far down, I think all as far possibly as even Botswana is a risk zone for Africa. And in South America, it's that there's some risk in the north, but they don't really worry about it. Then it's Brazil, Peru, Bolivia, Paraguay, that band um, has has it down there. And so uh, if you're gonna be traveling to that region, and I am, then you need to be aware that you need to have it. Now you could be going into a low risk zone, but a place where it could spread. There generally you don't need the shot um, uh, on its own, but you may want to consider it. I would 
be rather safe than sorry, right? That's when it comes to yellow fever, it's definitely a better safe than sorry kind of thing. Um, but I'm going to be traveling to Bolivia is the plan. And Bolivia is certainly within the high risk zone. Um, I think the worst risk is Brazil, but Bolivia is very close. It's, it's one of the three most dangerous places to be traveling for yellow fever in South America, right? Which it's nowhere near the risk of many places in Africa. So, so keep that in, in mind uh, as far as uh, it's not a super high risk zone. And mostly I'm going to be in the Andes, right? It's just that if you travel to Bolivia, people can't prove that you didn't go to the Amazon because because mm -hmm. Bolivia has Am Amazonian basins and that area has the mosquitoes and that area has a yellow fever, potentially. Um, I'm not going there. I'm flying into the plan is Santa Cruz. I will then be immediately traveling to Cochabamba, which is up in the mountains, uh, and I will be acclimating to the high altitude there. And then after a while there, I'll be traveling up to La Paz, which is much higher. Uh, and those are cold places, they do not have yellow fever. So I don't have to worry about that there, but I could travel to places in Bolivia or other people could be traveling in Bolivia and come into contact with the mosquitoes and potentially be carrying yellow fever. So it's just a precautionary thing. From my perspective, I have no worries about coming into contact with, with yellow fever and I don't have to really worry about it. But better safe than sorry, because coming up next year, my plan is to be in places where it will be dangerous, right? I plan on being in Paraguay and, and driving across it. I plan on being all over Brazil uh, possibly some other places. Those are the big ones. Um, and so I definitely need my, my shots. But very importantly, if you're going to travel into those zones, normally they don't require you to get shots going in. Um, and I know someone who recently traveled into Brazil and didn't uh, know about the shots and got to Brazil, and that was no problem. Brazil's like, yeah, whatever, you're not bringing yellow fever with you. Uh, <laughs> and then once they were there, they weren't in a yellow fever zone. So Brazil wasn't like, oh no, you don't have yellow fever, right? Because they don't have to worry about it where they were and the beach, not a thing. But to then travel on to get anywhere, especially up here, they had to come through Panama. Panama, like Colombia and Venezuela and Nicaragua and Costa Rica and many other places, sit in an area where uh, yellow fever doesn't exist, but it could exist and it can, it's not likely to have an outbreak, but it can spread a little bit, like it's possible. So this area is very wary of yellow fever coming into the zone. And so anytime you're coming from a country where there is yellow fever, even if it's a tiny amount, not very risky, oh, the rain is coming back, uh, you have to have the vaccine, you just have to. And so if I travel to Bolivia, in order to return, I have to have yellow fever. And that is why I'm, I'm getting that vaccine now. Uh, so be aware if you're gonna be traveling to Africa, south of the Barbary Coast, uh, or you're gonna be coming to South America, north of uh, pretty much everywhere, right? Technically, I believe nowhere in Chile requires it. Uh, there's a little tiny piece of Argentina, very far away from where people vacation, that does have a little bit of a yellow fever problem, and Uruguay is generally considered to be okay. But even though there are border zones, so it's like, well, you, it wouldn't hurt, right? But if you're going anywhere else, just get your yellow fever vaccine, have it and be done. Don't, don't fight it. And you're gonna, so for those who have not done it, um, before I tell you about how we do it in Nicaragua, just in general, you get a yellow fever vaccination card. You have a yellow card. It's like if you've done the COVID cards, it's like one of those, except for it's yellow fever. And you carry that around like anything. And you, uh, you, you show that when people ask for it, right? So you've probably gotten used to this stuff for COVID. Support it or not, like it or not, whatever, it doesn't matter. For yellow fever, the process is the same. Now a lot of people know how that works, so it's a lot easier if you have to deal with it for yellow fever. So how do you get your vaccine here in Nicaragua? So the Department of Health is the only place you can get it. That is in Managua. I'll do my best to get the address and, and link it down below. I'm not going to put it on the video portion of the show because that's not very useful. But you got to go to the Department of Health. Uh, you just walk in, say you're there for, for yellow fever. They'll tell you where to go. Uh, it is very simple. The name is the same in Spanish. So fever is fiebre and uh, uh, yellow is amarillo. And so fiebre amarillo is yellow fever. So you can't get confused. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, you go to the Caja, which is the place where you, you pay. Um, and and so it, that means box, but it means like the payment booth. Uh, you go to the Caja and you say, I'm paying for yellow fever. It should be $30 US. You can pay with Cordoba, the local currency. You can pay with US dollars and you can pay with a credit card. Super easy. I paid with a credit card in my particular case because I didn't want to deal with cash. And they hand you a blank form that you then take. And this is the one little part that's hard. Once you've paid, they're like, go off and get your thing. And you're like, where now? So you have to wander through. You have to find the, the yellow fever office. And it's just a lady who sits in an office, a nurse, I'm sure. And she has shots ready. You walk in, you hand her the paper. She tells you what to fill out. You fill it out. They give you a shot. They hand you the card and send you on your way. They'll ask you, which arm would you like that in? Because it may not be working great for the next day. And she's like you'll probably be feeling pretty sick tomorrow. And I don't feel bad, but I can tell that I had a shot, right? But 
it, it's fine, not, not bad at all. I have a little bit of a cough, like it feels like a really light flu. But I kind of had a really light flu anyway, so who knows. Um, but so very easy, $30, only took probably the entire thing. Standing in line and everything was definitely less than 45 minutes. It may have been less than 20 minutes. Alan did it recently and had the same experience. He's like, yeah, it was so easy. Just walk into the thing, pff, they walk you through and it's done. Um, so very, very simple here in, in Nicaragua. So if you're gonna be here and plan on traveling on or returning from places that have uh, exposure to yellow fever, Absolutely, that's uh, that's what you'll need to do, and it's thirty dollars, easy as can be. But you, ha it takes ten days, right? From the time you get your shot until you are vaccinated is a ten day delay. So don't time it for the last second. Obviously, if you're flying down and they don't require the test for coming into the country, not eight nine days to get there, not a problem. It'll take you a day or two before you decide to return, minimum. So you'll be you'll be matured by the time you're coming back. So you know, just be aware there's a ten day cycle before the vaccine is considered to have taken effect and you'll want to account for that in any of your travels. So I should be all set now. I do have to apply yet to the embassy for Bolivia and make sure that they approve me to head down and then I have to book my tickets. I'm at a point where I'm trying to do that pretty rapidly. We will see uh, how quickly I'm able to get down there. So that is what's going on with that and that is why I have my really simple yellow fever vaccination. Once we did that, we ran some errands in town, just picking up some kids that are coming back with us to stay at the house and drove back in the storm. It is a good amount of rain all day. All the time we were doing all this, it was pouring. Uh, being in the Ministry of Health, because this is Nicaragua, so every government thing is outdoors, everything was flooded. You could actually get to all the offices, not a problem, but all their courtyards, all their lunch areas, all their waiting areas, everything was underwater, like as much as six inches. Like it was really a lot of water. Now, everything in Nicaragua was built to handle a lot of water because it's a monsoon country, like for real, check it out, we're in the monsoon zone. And uh, so so this is a monsoon going on and, and, and it feels like it, right? So the drive back to Leon, another three hours because of the rain, went fine, not a problem. Visibility was actually okay. At no point was it was it really bad. Um, and then once we got back to Leon, we stopped at the La Colonia, the supermercado, uh, just to pick up groceries and stuff because we had extra people staying with us for the week because of the storm. Schools are closed in Managua because um, when there's a ton of water like this, sometimes the schools have a hard time keeping their water supply clean uh, just because of all the rainwater washing into it or something. I don't know the details. They have water supply problems during big storms. And so a lot of times they just send kids home. It's their equivalent of, of snow days. I'm from New York. We will get snow days. Sometimes here they get uh, torrential rain days. So same difference and they, they account for it. And it's just normal part of life and people expect it. And people don't really use school like a daycare system here. Like in the US, so the ability to send kids home with no notice is really good uh, in general. But um, so that happened. So we went to the grocery store and got a bunch of extra food and snacks and, and just stuff so that more people would be able to eat here. And when we went in, it was rainy. It was like, ah, oh, run in and it was fine. When we came out, the water was flowing through the streets. So we were probably there for 30 minutes. That's how fast it took for the rain to pick up a little bit and the water to go from the streets are wet to the streets are underwater and flowing rivers. Uh, and it was actually pretty difficult to get out of the grocery store. I had to just suck it up and go into very deep water, work my way through the grocery, through the streets, go get the car, come back and, and try to pick everyone up and minimize the, it was, it's something when it gets like this. But luckily out here where we are, uh, even when it's when it's a torrent, it doesn't get that much here. Like obviously the grass gets really wet. Like there's some water here. We have great drainage and it goes down behind us. And so the water just flowed out and at no point was it more than just a really, really wet yard. It's the most we've seen here, but it wasn't very much um, as far as, you know, it, it never did it come up onto our patio, never did it come into the house or anything like that other than just rain blowing through the windows. Um, so that worked out really well. So that was our day driving and doing all that out to Managua. It was a good day of adventure. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video of driving around Managua. Um, I like to get those when I can and shake things up over here. As always, get down there in the comments, ask your questions. Let me know what you are, are wondering about Nicaragua or travel or vaccines or housing or relocation or moving abroad uh, or cameras, uh, driving in Managua, rain, um, oh, and I do have to say, so during the storm, uh, the city of Akatal, which is one of the northernmost cities and relatively small, uh, like like 80,000 people, I want to say. Uh, it's one of the old colonial cities, though, so it, it struggles from that here in Nicaragua, way up on the Honduran border. Their water supply failed uh, today. And so the, the for we don't know what happened and we don't know what's ha what's going on still, uh, but their their main water supply started pumping sludge uh, because the, the something had backed up into the water supply. So they have a major, major health crisis. 
crisis up there. Of course, luckily it's a small city, so a lot of people, I'm sure they will just evacuate to other cities. Um, I'm sure they're, pump, they're, they're bringing up water for them. Um, it is, you know, I think they're still able to like flush and stuff like that, which is really critical to maintaining uh, health, um, but they don't have drinking water. So hopefully just trucks of drinking water are heading up there. They're in the mountain region. Uh, so there's a local water supply is not too bad as far as getting spring water directly. There are water suppliers up in that area. So it's relatively local. Uh, they take it from like mountain springs and stuff. So they should be okay. Uh, but uh, they got to deal with that. That is a, a health crisis underway. So if you'd be so kind as to hit that like button, if you've not subscribed, do that. If you have not told your closest, dearest friends and family about this awesome channel and how they should join it to have coffee with me in the morning and then be able to talk with you about what happened on the show that day, like let them know. If you haven't put it on social media yet, if you haven't let, you know, the Reddits and the LinkedIn's and the, the Facebooks, all those things know about the show, go, uh, go do a little bit of promotion. Let, let's get another subscriber or two from every one of our viewers that would be amazing thank you and of course if you'd like to support the show directly you may do so at buymeacoffee.com slash scott allen miller that means so much to me thank you to everyone who does that and as always i will see all of you tomorrow <laughs>